OK, so we're going to have a look at generating functions of constant sequences and also sequences which are eventually constant in the end. So the generating function of a sequence, or more precisely here, the ordinary generating function, is essentially what you get if you take all of the terms in your sequence and you turn these into the coefficients and the Maclaurin expansion of a function. And sometimes this can be useful because if there's a nice way to evaluate the sum, it will give you a finite way of expressing your generating function f which then allows you to encode a lot of information about your sequence in a very concise, compact way. So we'll see for constant sequences or sequences which are eventually constant. This isn't very practically useful, but it's still quite a nice problem to solve. So for our first example, we've just got a sequence which is constant. Every term is the same, so all the terms are equal to c for some real or perhaps even a complex number c. So how do we find what the generating function is? Well, we know that f of x is just going to be c plus cx plus cx squared and so on. So we can write this as the sum of cx to the k from k equals naught to infinity. And then we see that we could take out our factor of c, which gives us a nice geometric series, just x to the k. And we know the formula for this sum is going to be 1 over 1 minus x. So you get c over 1 minus x. We also know for which values of x this is going to be valid, as the sum of our geometric series is valid when the absolute value of x is less than 1. So we found our generating function for a constant sequence. Our next example, we're just going to have one term at the beginning which isn't necessarily equal to c, and we'll see how this changes our generating function. So we start off once again, f of x. This is now going to be a plus cx plus cx squared plus cx cubed, and so on. So what if we now take out a factor of cx from all of these terms at the end? You get a plus cx, then you get 1 here, plus x from this next term, plus x squared from this next term. You can see we're getting this structure of a geometric series once again. So you end up now with a plus cx, and then this geometric series is just going to be 1 over 1 minus x again. So divide this by 1 minus x. We'll write this all as a single fraction, just to make this a little bit neater. So you get a times 1 minus x plus cx, all of this over 1 minus x. And then if we just expand the brackets here and collect together our terms with the x coefficient, you end up with a plus c minus a times x, all over 1 minus x. And once again, this is valid when the absolute value of x is less than 1, because this is when our series converges. So now we'll look at the more general picture, which is where we've got the first, we'll say, n plus 1 terms aren't constant, and everything is constant from then on. So this does now cover every possible sequence where it's eventually constant in the end. So you can just take a n to be the last term, which isn't equal to your constant term c there. So what's the generating function of this going to be? We'll start off just by writing it out quite long-windedly as a naught plus a 1 x and so on up to a n x to the n. Then when we get into the c terms, you get c x to the n plus 1 plus c x to the n plus 2, and so on. So we'll deal with the c terms first. We can use this same argument as before, so just leave the x terms alone. If we take out a factor of c x to the n plus 1, we'll be able to apply the same trick now. c x to the n plus 1, then you get a factor of 1 plus x plus x squared, and so on. So we can use our geometric series formula. So we'll now get the same all of our a terms plus c x to the n plus 1 and this term is just 1 over 1 minus x so you just divide this by 1 minus x so next we'll put all of this over a common denominator 1 minus x and then we need to multiply each of these terms then by 1 minus x so you get a naught 1 minus x plus a 1 times x times 1 minus x and so on all the way up to a n x to the n 1 minus x and don't forget as well, we still need to have this plus c x to the n plus 1 term. So this is the generating function. This is valid when the absolute value of x is less than 1. But I think we can do a bit better. Let's try and group together our constant terms and our x to the power of 1 terms and so on. So you get a naught is our constant term. For our x to the power of 1 term, its coefficient is now a1 from this term minus a naught from that term. And then if we go on to x squared, we're missing a2 times x squared there, but then we take away this a1 times x squared, so you get a2 minus a1 x squared, and so on, all the way up to we'll have a n minus a n minus 1 times x to the n, 
and then plus c minus a n times x to the n plus 1, where your a n x to the n plus 1 term is negative from there. And don't forget to divide all of this by 1 minus x. So now we can write this much more compactly if we, first of all, will allow ourselves to write a naught just to follow the pattern as a naught minus a minus 1, because we don't have an a minus 1 in there, but let's just define a minus 1 to be equal to 0. Then we get a nice expression. We can write this as a sum from k equals naught up to n of a k minus a k minus 1 times x to the k. Then we've also got this c minus a n times x to the n plus 1 term in there. And don't forget, all of this gets divided by 1 minus x. So this is our final expression then for the generating function. But another way of writing this is, instead of having c, we could actually say c, why don't we write this as a n plus 1. Then we can actually just have a single term in the numerator, which is the sum now from k equals 0 to n plus 1. You can see c minus a n just becomes a n plus 1 minus a n. So this follows our pattern of a k minus a k minus 1 times x to the k all over 1 minus x for our generating function. And of course, this is valid when the absolute value of x is less than 1, once again, in order for our geometric series to converge. Now, I'd just like to finish by showing how this formula fits into a slightly bigger picture. So let's imagine now that we've got a sequence, just any sequence, where it's not necessarily constant in the end. Of course, we can write its generating function just f of x is equal to the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of a k times x to the k. So to see how this is connected to what we've just done, I'm just going to multiply by 1 minus x over 1 minus x, of course, excluding the case now where x is equal to 1. So you get the sum from k equals 0 to infinity once again of a k x to the k. What we'll do next is multiply out this bracket, so this 1 minus x, but we'll leave the 1 over 1 minus x on its own. So then we get the sum from k equals 0 to infinity, so we just multiply by 1, so you get the same thing here. But then we're taking away x times this sum, so I'll write this now as the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of a k and instead of being x to the k, we're multiplying it by another x, so we get x to the power of k plus 1. Now to combine these two sums together, what we'll do is we'll actually relabel this ever so slightly. So if you imagine your first term is a0, x to the 1, your second term is a1, x squared, we can actually write this as a sum starting from k equals 1 going up to infinity of a k minus 1 times x to the k. So this will be useful because then we can compare things where we've got the same powers of x. So we have 1 over 1 minus x, and I'll take out the a0 term here as well, so that we're going from k equals 1 and from k equals 1 for this as well. We just leave that alone for now. Then you get the sum from k equals 1 up to infinity of, it's now a k minus a k minus 1, all times x to the power of k. And once again, with our a0 term, we can actually just introduce, let's say that a minus 1 is equal to 0. So then we can have a0 minus a minus 1 here. And then this fits in with our pattern. So we can write this, finally, as the sum from k equals 0 to infinity. So here you've got a0 minus a minus 1 times x to the 0. So this works. We get a k minus a k minus 1 x to the k. And don't forget, all of this is being divided by 1 minus x. So what we've done here is actually started with a general sequence and we found its generating function. There's a nice way of, with a bit of algebraic manipulation, we can show that its generating function can be expressed like this in a slightly different format. And you can see this is exactly the same as what we've got here, other than in the general picture we sum all the way up to infinity, whereas in this case where a n plus 1 is our constant term, we stop at a n plus 1. A nice way of seeing this is, what would happen after a n plus 1, you'd have a n plus 2 minus a n plus 1. Of course, this would just be equal to 0 when your sequence is constant from there on. And similarly, a n plus 3 minus a n plus 2, this would also be 0. So actually, all of your terms after a certain point here are 0, so you get a nice finite expression here, essentially, if and only if your sequence is eventually constant after a certain point.